Hello. So, first of all, uh, I would like to greet everyone. Uh, and uh, we will like to kind of look at these slides as a bit kind of complementary text or, or, or media compared to the, to the paper. So here we will even more focus on uh, collaborative aspects. We remove kind of talk about tools and then we introduce additional kind of relationship uh, that are interesting for collaboration. So, so there are additional things that are not in the paper. So the first slide basically saw kind of rich relationship between us, a little bit about us and our interests and what is more interesting. So basically it tells as well how we correlate each other uh, relationship and what are our mutual interests. Uh, interesting thing is that Sin Sheldon is my twin brother, identical, which is interesting for twin talks here. Uh, then, and then you can also see like a three interesting aspects, basically that we have a, a, we kind of really took hard on D and H aspects dipole. And you have basically D peers and H peers, and there's communication with Solali, uh, Solali D, which is blue, and H, which is red, and cross domain, which is green. Um, so this is kind of to make it clearer. Okay, so I think um, with this, I will just say, we, we, we didn't talk too much about tools that we developed, but there are like a three important things. We started basically with, with BookWick tool, which is infrastructure for a, a stylometric, mainly symmetric analysis across languages. So this is one thing that you have a link there you can check. Second one is Litera, which is more for presenting cross and uh, intertext relationship and findings done mostly by Bookwick. And third one is Colabo Space, which is infrastructure ongoing research in collaboration, how we can augment and expand capacity of these digital tools with the collaborative features. Uh, and last thing with Matthew, we, he kind of joined or we joined together on a later project, uh, Prismatic Jane Air. His, you have a, his link on a, on, a, on a project that he, he runs. Okay, so the next slide, please. Well, then. Right, okay, so I will also switch to my slides because I highlighted. So the first topic, basically, the, first, the kind of the collaboration started from, from pure DH practice translating by stylometry and kind of comes from, from Eugenia uh, needs in, in this domain. It's just a couple of words here. So my project, so this start, started with my PhD project at Yale University and my, uh, the project was focusing on writers who write on second language, just single writers. So for that, I needed to, a way to compare essentially texts written by, let's say Nabokov in Russian and English to say texts written by uh, Beckett in French and in English. So I needed some way to compare different writers writing in more than one language and across different languages. And what I understood there is that uh, we had to have a way to uh, augment qualitative with the quantitative there. And that's how I can turn to DH collaboration for that. Yeah. And, and basically with, with this, the kind of agreement sort of to start research came out of agreement that we, we mutually respect kind of different interests for for d dipole in our in in our case me and then other collaborators basically it was necessary that we see it beyond basically just utilizing tools or developing tools but more okay d part aspect is fundamentally interesting for us to understand how we can develop uh, tools that are much much richer or, or kind of going beyond particular kind of capacity tool to get result, but rather focusing on, okay, how we can design particular tool that will really address question rather than, okay, here is a tool, let's see what we as a DH scholar can get out of it. So this was kind of very important thing. And then more, interest more interestingly, we came further over that approach that uh, it's not for particular project or particular research, but we think of tools that are independent. They are kind of have us their own life. So in that aspect, we basically in last year started working with the Prismatic Jane, uh, Jane Air, which is international project with, uh, with a dozen of languages, um, researching stylometric features, close reading, distant reading, et cetera. And recently we are starting with, uh, with uh, even Byzantine texts. So 
and, 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 and cultural aspects of it. So basically, as you, as you can see, our research background and the research projects are kind of expanding from our initial idea and kind of giving life for, for collaboration over different projects. So basically, I already, I already talked about the second aspect in this, that case, technology. So for, for us, it was interesting how we can design tools that will make, in this sense, Eugenia and other researchers capable of independent research um, research capacity and the possibility to express their research needs without just basically kind of verbal talking and trying to understand how we can design, but rather how we can let her empower. And you will see example later. Uh, and from, from, from that perspective, we kind of over years of collaboration, which is, I don't know, maybe kind of close to 10 years now, basically we understood that there is a lot of methodological approach that we have to encounter in order to be able to, to, to have a more fruitful and a rich collaboration. So this is basically this diagram, as you can see, it's probably from familiar questions for, for you. Okay, so the next slide, please. And, and here basically our solution. So Eugenia will say about the, about the first about the first topic. Yeah, so again, since the question was to comp how to compare texts written at large corpora written in different languages across languages uh, by stylometric means, the solutions here were a number of things. So one solution was just the decision to work with the computer scientists on the, uh, and to devise original tools to tackle this rather than relying on existing tools. And part of the, re the reason for that was the need to work with large corpora and to work with multilingual corpora as well to kind of, uh, um, yeah. And then uh, the other main issues were, so one decision again was to balance close, close and distant reading. So here in my project then uh, the decision was that, um, that I compare, uh, so that I complement the close reading, the traditional literature analysis with the quantitative results. And uh, that became an essential part of my methodology here. Uh, another term we came up with was stylistic profile. And the idea here is to compromise between what uh, literary analysis seeks essentially and what uh, the tools, uh, digital tools at, the at this time can provide. That is to say, to acknowledge that, first of all, we need to translate from the language of literary analysis to the language of uh, quantitative, quantitative analysis. And then we need to understand that uh, what we then learn provides what we thought of as uh, points on a, on a space, imaginary space, information essentially, uh, a, a multidimensional information point that we can then compare across languages. So rather than st studying everything we want to study, we study what we can study and we compare those things, uh, and use those, those to feed into the project and to complement the close reading. Uh, and uh, one more point that's important here is to compare texts across languages. Uh, we decided to uh, compare not the texts themselves, not the data of, about the texts themselves, but rather how they deviate from balanced corpora in each language. So here's one example here, uh, a diagram. Uh, this was, um, so each line in this diagram is a novel by three bilingual writers. The red and orange is Nabokov, the green is Ramangari. Uh, and uh, the, the blue is Samuel Beckett. So all these texts are compared then to balance, uh, the, the English brown balance corpus, which is a zero point here. And they show that, so the hypothesis here uh, was that uh, bilingual writers are likely then to um, potentially use words that are not English in origin etymologically. So Latin or Greek, for example. Uh, due to their bilingualism, due to their access to other languages. And this is exactly what our results have shown, which is that every single novel by these three bilingual writers shows more Latin derived words than the corpus does. Yeah, which is kind of our main interest, cross, cross language, um, translingual in, in Eugenia's case. Um, and basically this is kind of foundation for us and kind of to, to way to practice and test our test our tools. Uh, so if you, if Leon can switch to the next slide, I will remember what is written on the first one. I have it in front of me. So basically you can see uh, example both of, a, of, of a tool that we developed. So as you on the top, top diagram is basically showing a real tool that uh, 
that Eugenia and other researchers can use to visually express their needs, because it's very important kind of close to, to reduce the gap between close and distant reading to be able to, to play on their own. So this you can see there. Uh, at the bottom slide, you can see a concept of our methodology. So basically we introduced a lot of computer supported cooperative work principles there. We met at our own in order to, to achieve this kind of uh, challenges in a collaboration, especially in distant collaboration. So then next slide, please. We are running out of time. Um, uh, okay, so basically here you can see uh, what, what are challenges and uh, I will just say very, very quickly here the next, next last slide I think you will have to read on your own because we are out of time. So here it was, as you said, as you heard. Um, so basically here what it was kind of really interesting for us to understand that we really had to overcome challenges, especially between us, she wanted really quick and uh, in a sense, dirt, from my perspective, dirty results. Just let's get give me results. From our perspective, it was much more interesting how we can understand what's going on, how we can get, make it more sustainable, reproducible, how we can reuse that, how we can make like a, for different languages, same, same workflow that will kind of avoid any mistake in computation that we kind of really clearly running the same thing. So that was between us with Matthew later because we started working with Oxford University. We, we moved to, to Norwich here in UK. Basically it was interesting legal ownership of, of our research because we got a grant, but then it was naturally by, by contract that they own everything like a tools and everything. So it was interesting to see how we can overcome and we happily overcome that distinction between tools and results that they really care about. And then again, like regarding motivation and that's what I'm finishing with, it's very important that you have social engaged interest and we do a lot of kind of with the same tools, a lot of kind of working with poets, with the scientists, federating them for our social causes like refugees or global warming, etc. So all these kind of things feed our collaboration, make it live over, over many years. And then the next slide, basically you can, you can I guess, read on your, on your own. Yes, I think because uh, thank you very much, but uh, we are running out of time, I see. Thank you.